In 1960s, a small kid named Bill Gates created a software. The name of that software was, guess what? Microsoft Office. He created a spreadsheet program and he started selling it. Initially, Intel and other companies were buying. Later on, that company became Windows, Microsoft, and rest is history. Now, what really happened is Bill Gates learned coding early in his life when he was just 14 or 15. And that is how he built such a big empire. Fast forward today, 2024, and I am talking about coding only. Why? There is a reason. Because the new piece of software which can be created now using coding is softwares for biotech industry. Let us build softwares for the biotech industry in an easy way. And that is why code, coding for biology exists. Now, let me give you an example. So, if you have ever worked in a biotech lab, you must have seen a LIMS, which is called as Laboratory Information Management System. Now, what if you, if you know coding, you could improve the LIMS or you could create an AI-powered LIMS, right? That's a small basic example. Well, there are multiple such examples which you could do. You can use AI softwares in drug discovery. You could use AI softwares in agriculture, aquaculture or whatnot. Right from the underdeveloped country to the most developed country today, AI ML is revolutionizing the biotech pharma industry. But there are two sides of AI. Okay. One is like, okay, suppose I know Microsoft Word. So I know how to use it. But if I knew how to make a Microsoft Word software, then I could earn millions of dollars. That's exactly what I'm talking about. I'm talking about building AI powered softwares because this is era of AI in 2024 for the biotech and pharma industry. Well, if you want to do that, if you want to publish papers on such case studies, then this is the initiative which Biotechnica has undertaken, which will help you. So let's jump in today to find out what exactly coding for biology entails for you and how it is going to help you. Now to start with, today I'm going to give you a brief introduction about coding for biology. Then we'll talk about the similarity then we'll have an icebreaker session where we'll have a debate on how can we benefit from this uh, learning these softwares. We will analyze the current market trends. We will have a brainstorming session and then finally we'll conclude with what exactly you should be doing. So this is what we are going to talk today. Now starting with what exactly is programming or coding, right? So um, in, in biology way, if I have, if I have to say that your genes have the, this DNA base pairs, A, T, G, C, right? So A, T, G, C is the code. The same way in computers, there is a code. So for our body is built on a code, A, T, G, C. The same way computers are built on a code, right? So that's what, that is why you need to learn programming because you can use the computer code to decipher the human code. That is the first thing. The next thing, what are the benefits? The number one benefit is the real money is in the softwares. But if, and let me tell you this, software companies don't have a good understanding of biotech industry, how biotech industry works. You have. So what if you could create biotech softwares? That's the benefit. That's the number one benefit you have. Now, where is the industry moving forward right now? If you see, after the advent of chat GPT and then origin.ai by Dr. Reddy's and uh, open AI partnering with Moderna and then you have open CRISPR now wherein you can use AI to use CRISPR tool and cut the gene at the exact splice, the gene at exact uh, location. All of that is happening because of AI. But what if you create that AI? What if you learn how to create that and you create a better version of that? That is what Biotechnica's aim is and that is where industry is moving. Now, what will be the future of programming? Many students come to me and say, sir, uh, we won't need to program because uh, AI will do the programming for us. You are right. But if the AI makes a mistake, can you find out where exactly is the mistake? Correct? If you want to be on the other side of the fence, creating that AI which will do programming in the biotech world, 
then you can earn millions and billions of dollars. So my dream is to help you create that. My dream is to help you understand that programming in biology, coding in biology is no longer a need. It is the most important skill set which you need today. So what are you waiting for? Let's dive in and find out what are the similarities of humans and computers and why should we learn them. So why learn programming? Because it's a binary tool. Computers are binary tool because we say 0 and 1. And then we use it to visualize the data of a quaternary tool. You know, what is a quaternary tool? We are the quaternary tool. You are the quaternary tool because you have four parts. A, T, G, C. Right? So you, if we will use a binary tool to analyze a quaternary tool. Manually, I can't do it because this gene, uh, gene sequence, the DNA sequence is so huge that it will take me probably millions of years to analyze. But using AI, ML, we can visualize. Using computers, we can visualize. And that is where coding comes into picture. Now, let's move forward and understand what are the benefits. So, like I said, IT industry, which is India's biggest industry at this juncture, is moving slowly towards bio-IT. We, we are seeing projects in Accenture, Wipro, and Infosys, where they are looking for bioinformaticians and AIML experts who have understanding of biology. I have so many engineers who are coming to me to learn biology because they want to implement, create AI in biology softwares. So, you already have the knowledge of biology. You can just learn IT skill and create those softwares. Now, AI ML is helping to decipher data at a better speed than earlier. So, earlier it used to take, say, 10x speed. Now, we are working at 1000x speed. How? Because of AI. Now, bio-IT is saving a lot of dollars for the biotech industry. The other day, I had a, um, um, a, con a conversation with a Swiss company CEO and he said, uh, Shekhar, I want bioinfo experts who also have AI knowledge so that they can create better anal analysis tool, analytical tool for me. And that is what where the future is for all of us. Now, what are the benefits? Now, you look at this. As we speak, we are sitting on a next pandemic and that is antimicrobial resistance. So, bacteria is evolving at a faster pace. But are we able to generate Newer drugs, newer medicines for that. No, our speed is still slow, right? And then we are also doing aging research. We are doing research on rare diseases. In fact, if you see, there is so much money being poured on aging research by billionaires and rare disease research that sometimes I also feel overwhelmed. You should know this, that scientists are being paid in hundreds of crores to do research on aging as well as rare diseases in the United States of America. And when AI comes in, you will be able to do all of that faster. And that is the benefit of coding because you can decipher, you can move forward. And that is where the industry is right now. The, the blue color is IT and the red is BT and they're merging. And that is where the bio IT comes into picture. Bio IT is the future of biotech. See, you want to become a molecular biologist. There are hundreds and thousands of people already in the queue. But if you want to become a bio IT expert, there are hardly 10 to 20 people in the entire country. So my suggestion is, go where the trend is, ride the wave, capture the wave, gain more speed in your uh, existing career. If you have a career break also, you still have a reason to start because you can say, I was so much interested in bio-IT, so I jumped in and I want to restart my career in bio-IT. People will be fine with that, right? Now, let us understand the similarity of human and computers, right? So what is the first criteria we have? Basic coding system. So basic coding system of humans is what? We have ATGC, computers has binary, 0, 1, 0, 1. So basically there is a similarity. This is 4x, this is 2x, correct? So yeah, we, we do have a similarity. Now what is the next similarity we have got? Now look at this, information storage. How do we store information? In humans, we store in the DNA sequence. And that is what nucleotide sequences, if it changes, it causes mutation. So it has to be in the exact particular sequence. That's how the information is passed on hereditary. That's genetics, correct? Computers also store information in bytes. Small bits of information called as bytes, we call it. That's how computers will store the information. Let's look at another similarity. So what is the processing mechanism of all the information which we have in the DNA stored? We convert into RNA and then do protein, right? Three-dimensional protein. 
The same way in computers, what we have, we have CPU, which will read the data and then it will output on our output device. Like you can see here, this is output device, it's a computer. So we can read the data easily. The same way, DNA, RNA, protein, the same way CPU helps us output the data on an output device. So this is a similarity. Now, what is the next similarity we have got between computers and humans? Error correction, right? So suppose we have some error in our DNA. So DNA repair mechanisms is there. Now, what if we have a similar thing? So we also have error detection and correction algorithms. Of course, nowadays it is using AI also. So computers are getting smarter, right? Just like our DNA uh, repair mechanisms, this is also there. Now, what next similarity we have? Well, we have an input and output method. So in humans, we have receptors, actions like protein synthesis, right? So in computers, what do we have? What is the output? Output is a monitor, keyboard, and mouse. That's how we interact and that's how we, you can see the screen right now. This is an output device. So same way, our protein synthesis is a output we get from our genetic data. Now, similarity, again, programmability. Can we program the DNA? Yes, it is possible if we change the sequence, the DNA program changes, the information changes. The same way in softwares, we can program, we can, in computers, we can program a so software which will do the job. So what we see here now, there is a similarity here as well. So actually computers and humans are very similar, but if we design softwares for humans by computers, which can be used in the biotech industry, you have a billion dollar in the bank ready. That is what you have to think about. Now, do humans use energy? Of course, we have ATP, ADP to ATP. That's the phosphorylation, right? Next, what do we do in the computers? We have electrical energy, very similar. So what we are seeing so far, there's a lot of similarity. Now, one more similarity is communication. How do humans communicate at the cellular level? So we have chemical signals, we have transit, transduction pathways, physical contacts, gap junctions, but at the same time, computers also how do they interact? They have internet, they have wired wireless network protocols. So basically, that's how computers interact. That's how humans also interact. So there is no much difference. But the situation is when it comes when it comes to adaptability. Now, when humans, can they adapt? Yes, we have gene expression regulation. We have natural selection. So we adapt over a period of time according to the environment. The same way softwares also nowadays are adapting to the new hardware upgrades. And of course, with the AI, we are seeing more adaptability coming in computers also. So it looks like we are nothing different than a computer. In fact, I should say we are an advanced computer. What is the next similarity? Replication. So can computers replicate? We'll look at that. But for humans, yes. Self-replication through mitosis and meiosis. Yes, that is there. But can computers uh, replicate non-self-replicating manufactured they cannot replicate yet but who knows in future maybe computers will start replicating for now they cannot right so that's where the difference is now what is the future of programming if you understand the similarity and the differences if you understand what kind of softwares the biotech industry will need which ca which can be used using the AIML then you have a market for it so you can decide what you want to become you can become a no code coder who doesn't know how to code, but you'll have to pay someone to, or buy someone's software to work, right? The same way. So that's how Bill Gates became a billionaire. Now, you can be a coder. Now, there is IT people. They know how to code, but they don't have knowledge of biology. It will take them five to 10 years to understand biology, right? But when we, it comes to you, you already have all the knowledge of biology. Learning computer takes one month. Learning coding takes one month, practicing takes six months. By the end of six months, you would have published papers in BioIT. Once you have published papers in BioIT, you have already built a reputation as an established researcher, and then you can easily get jobs into the market for BioIT. And that is what our Coding for Biologists initiative is all about. So what you need to learn in this Coding for Biologists, you need to learn about Python, you need to learn about R language, you need to learn MATLAB, you need to learn Julia and all the such programming languages and our team, our team of scientists, three scientists are going to train you. Dr. Nilofar Sheikh, Dr. Pr Mr. Pradyot Banerjee and Dr. Prakriti will be training you on all these softwares in the next three and six months projects which we have. And the, the next question which obviously you will ask is, okay, I have learned programming. Can I get a job? The answer is yes. Biotechnica in the three months and six months 
uh, projects which you will do with uh, Biotechnica for coding for biologists. We are providing placement assistance also. There will be a WhatsApp group where we will be posting all the bio IT jobs. You have to apply. You have to go give interviews and that's how you can get placed. So this is where it, uh, yes, you can get the job and you can be job ready as well. The next thing is what is the process? So first is learn. The second is practice. The third is gain experience. And of course, fourth is grab a job. Now, for those women who cannot move out of their homes and or you, you cannot move out of your city, you can do this also. You can learn, you can take up projects on Upwork and you can do freelancing and you can earn in tens of thousands of dollars. Just recently, I'll tell you, I earned $10,000 because we took our project, which wherein we took seven days of uh, data analysis for a bioinformatics thing and we delivered it to the client and client paid us $10,000, right? That's more than... 8 lakh rupees for just 7 days of work. So what happens is all of this can be done if you learn the coding for biologist. Now what next we have, what is the process we have? So yes, we do have a coding for biologist uh, training program. As you can see, this is for um, 30 days and then you do coding projects with us and you publish the papers with us and followed by that, once you are, a, you know, you've learned all of that, I would highly recommend that you go for our AI ML in biology and drug discovery course and publish paper here also, then you become a complete 360 degree bio IT researcher. So this is the process which you have to follow. Now we are starting this coding for biologist initiative from 13th of May. All the details are given in the description. Go ahead and check it out. And if you have any questions, you can write to me at shaker at biotechnica.org. Thank you so much for watching this video. See you soon in the next one. Till then, keep shining, keep coding, keep learning. All the best.